does gut health affect your overall dental health? Not a lot of people put these two things together, but I'm going to talk to you about how one affects the other in a big way. And here's the interesting thing. Oftentimes you can look at your teeth to gain a lot of knowledge and information about what's actually going on in your gut. So how are they related? Well, there's two relationships. Number one is the gut biome or the bacteria that are actually in the gut and the mouth biome or the bacteria that are actually in the mouth. They are neighbors, they're cousins. They get along well, or they're supposed to get along well. And if you have gum disease or a problem with too many bacteria in your mouth, it's usually a sign that things are going on with your gut biome or the bacteria in your gut as well. So what do you do about it? Well, the first thing we do is we actually check the gum health and we see what are the bacteria doing? How healthy are they? And are they keeping you healthy? And we do a lot of work to make sure that those bacteria are balanced. We use ozone here in the dental practice. We also have products that we use at home. One of the ones that I really recommend is my mouth rinse because it has colloidal silver, which is a broad spectrum antimicrobial. It keeps the gums and the bugs in the gums and the mouth healthy as well as in the gut. That's the first connection. The second connection is actually the teeth themselves. The gut is where we take in food and absorb nutrients. And we just take it for granted that we're going to absorb everything that we actually take in. But that's not what happens. Not everything actually gets out of the gut and into the rest of the circulatory system and moved to then the organ systems or the bones or the teeth where we need them. What has to happen to make that happen? In the gut itself, there is a lot of acid. And that's there for a reason, because the acid breaks the food apart. It breaks the food apart into proteins, into absorbable pieces called amino acids. It breaks the minerals apart into absorbable pieces. It ionizes or changes them so that we can absorb them. If you don't have that stomach acid there, what happens is the food moves on past the stomach, past the places that it should be absorbed, and goes out the other end. You then lose the benefit of all those nutrients that you are supposed to absorb. Here's the problem with that. The body needs those things. It's just like fuel in your car. If it actually didn't get to where it needed to go in the engine, the engine wouldn't run. The same thing happens in our bodies. If those nutrients don't get to where they need to go, which is our bones, our teeth, our heart, our brain, all of these places, then our body has to find them elsewhere. Well, when it comes to minerals, a great bank of minerals is right here in your teeth. So if your body is not able to absorb minerals from the food you're eating, we'll talk about why in just a moment, then it will go and mine them from the teeth and the bones. Now I can't see your bones, but I can see your teeth. And if you are starting to get tooth decay for no reason, meaning you brush your teeth, you take care of them the way that you were taught, the way that you know to do, they look clean when you come to the dentist, but yet you're still getting cavities, it usually means that your body is pulling minerals from your teeth to feed you, to take care of all of those other systems. So tooth health and tooth decay is a first warning sign that you aren't absorbing properly, that your gut isn't working right. So we need to pay attention to this. And if you're getting a lot of tooth decay, and again, there's no good reason for it, you need to look at gut health. So what do we do about it? Well, the first thing goes back to that acid. We have to make sure that this is actually working correctly. I have a real quick, I call it the down and dirty test that you can do at home. You're going to take a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a half a cup of water, drink it, and then time to see how long it takes you to burp. I know this sounds weird, but the baking soda is going to interact with that stomach acid and that chemical interaction between those two will create some gas that comes up as a burp. You should be burping in two to three minutes. If you're not burping in two to three minutes, you don't have adequate stomach acid. You don't have adequate stomach acid to absorb minerals, to break down proteins, to do a lot of the things that your body requires. So what do we do? The first step is we start by supplementing the acid. We want to add more acid back to the stomach. Now I consider this a Band-Aid treatment because as long as you're taking the acid, it helps, but if you ever stop, it doesn't. So the next phase is we're going to actually try to fix the problem. 
But first step is we have to supplement the acid or nothing that you're taking is actually going to do any good either. So we supplement the acid. That's step number one. I also have a product that soothes. So if you're just not feeling very good and you need some soothing down here, there's also another product called Gut Soothe that soothes really well. That's step number one. Step number two is we need to rebuild what's happening in the gut. So we need to go back to those bacteria we talked about, that gut biome. We need to rebuild it. So we have two products, one called Gut Health and one called Gut Rebuild. They work synergistically together to rebuild all the bacteria that are living down here that we really require to be healthy. So that is going to go hand in hand. Step one, which is supplementing the acid is going to go hand in hand with step two. They're going to happen at the same time. You're going to start rebuilding while adding the acid so that you're actually getting the benefit of those things you're taking to rebuild. Then about a month later, you're going to start doing some gut lining rebuilding. So the product is called Gut Well. And what that does is it actually rebuilds the gut lining. It has a handful of really beneficial nutrients, particularly herbs that will naturally rebuild that gut lining. Once it's rebuilt, the body should be able to absorb the nutrients the way it should. So that is step three. All of these things go together to make it so that your gut is operating properly so that you can get the nutrients you need to keep a healthy mouth, both bacterial-based and also mineral-based. You need those two things to keep guns happy and to keep teeth happy. This is why they are so related and interconnected with one another. We can see issues in the mouth and those issues mean we need to do something down below. So gut health and dental health are one and the same and we can gain a lot of clues and learn a lot of things about what's going on by just looking in our mouth.